today the title is of my message is called Anchor Yourself to Christ. Anchor. Anchor is what the ships use to able to stabilize in the ocean. Our life is like a ship in the ocean. A ship in the ocean faces many challenges. Storms, cyclones, hurricanes. And when a huge ship goes through those difficult times in their, in their journey, you know, they are, what are they supposed to do so they don't go off course and crash into something and get destroyed? They drop down the anchor into the ocean bed and the anchor gets attached to the, the ocean bed and it stabilizes the ship during the storm. Now, storm represents the events in our lives. Circumstances, things happening in your life. You can't help it, nor can you avoid it. Now, the sea represents where you live. That's your life in this world on earth. Now, the boat represents you. I once read, it says the safest place for a ship is to be in the harbor. But that is not what the ship is built for. In the same way, you know, you and me are created not just to survive, but to thrive. So as you as a boat in the sea faces the storm, what are you supposed to do? We all need an anchor. Why? Because, you know, we are on the sea of life and things causes our life to go up and down. Life is subject to tides. You have high tides and low tides. We have storms. Some storms can be predicted, but some storms cannot be predicted. They just come without you realizing. And then you have waves, big ones and small ones that comes crashing into your life. And then you have other crazy boats around you that come very close to you or they hit you and they rock your boat. They mess up your life. No fault of yours. So what does the anchor do? It keeps you from getting carried away by the storm. Now it doesn't keep the storm from coming, but it keeps you from being carried away by the storm. When the storm comes, when the waves hit our lives, you know, the anchor is supposed to keep us firm so that we are not dislocated. Again, it doesn't keep you from experiencing the turmoils and the turbulences. How many of you have ever taken a trip on the sea, on the, in a boat, whether it's a small boat or a big boat? How many of you have taken? Okay. How many of you have gone on river rafting? Which is more fun, the river rafting or the boat? Yeah. Why is it fun? <laughs> huh? <laughs> See, if it just goes smoothly, it's no fun. It is because of the waves and the rocks and then it hits you and you go and sometimes you fall out. That's the fun of it. <laughs> you know, think about your life. The incident that happened in your life. Do you just remember all the normal things, the boring things, the usual things? Or do you remember amazing things? Things that have gone off track. Things that has taken you on an edge. Those are the things we remember, right? As long as you and I are on this earth, we are going to face the wind and the storm, whether you like it or not. And it is not going to be just one or two. It will be many storms. And see, if you get destroyed in the very first storm, how are you going to survive the, the next one? But anchor is not only required when there's a storm, but it's also important when there is calm. When the sea is calm, because if you're not anchored in the calm times, you will also drift away. So when the storm comes in our lives, the question is, where are you? Are you blown away? And when things come back to normal, you are not normal because you are not able to handle the experience you went through. And how are you? Are you battered and bruised because of what you experienced that you're unable to go through in life? Now you can use the anchor in three ways. The first way is you can have the anchor and you can keep it in the boat. Right? Thinking that having an anchor in the boat will keep you safe. Is the anchor supposed to be in the boat? 
how it's supposed to be outside the boat. And see, having, keeping the anchor in the boat is like you wanting to fix your own problems. I'm anchored to my own peace. I don't need anyone's help. My willpower and my self-discipline is enough for me to face any storms. Really? Have you survived all these years on your own? So, you know, we can't keep the anchor in the boat. But then there's a second way to use the anchor is to throw the anchor in someone else's boat. That means depending on other people to help you, to save you, and to keep you strong. It's like saying my spouse is my rock. I don't need anybody else. My family, that's enough. I can handle everything. All my friends are my support. All my job is my security. The problem is, see, your spouse and your friends, they too are facing their own storms in, li in their lives. Right? And if you throw your anchor in, in, anchor in their boat, guess what? You are dragged in their storm. And then both of you are facing the same problems. You know, we are all anchored to something. Because if you're not anchored to the right thing, we will all be lost, whether you like it or not. Your spouse, no matter how awesome they are, cannot help you to be saved. Your friends, no matter how awesome they are, cannot support you because they too need help. Your job cannot give you security. We saw that in pandemic, where so many of us lost our jobs. So throwing the anchor in someone else's boat doesn't save you too. One is throwing the anchor into the ocean, into the seabed. That's the right thing to do because that is what holds you during the rough period. And why is it so important to be anchored to the right thing? Because your anchor will either save you or it will sink you. That's how important it is. So if, that, if something is that serious, we better make the right decision. So that was my introduction. Now we'll go to the message. So let's turn to John chapter 16, verse 33. Who should we be anchored to? Now what did you... Focus on this passage carefully. The one thing, is, first thing Jesus wants us that while we live in this world, you will have trouble. You will have storm. You will have hurricane. You can't avoid that. Whether you like it or not, as long as you're on this earth, your boat will be rocked. Even if you believe in Jesus or you don't believe in Jesus, even then also, your boat will be rocked. But what is the solution Jesus gives over you? He says that, I, that, you know, uh, I told you this thing that you may have peace in this world. He says, I want to give you peace. Why? Because Jesus says, I have overcome the world. See, because Jesus also had his own storm he had to face. Because he was anchored to his father throughout his time, he was able to be victorious on the cross. He was raised from the dead. He was survived a hurricane or a storm can help you to survive. So what Jesus is saying is, hey, be anchored to me. Because I have overcome the world. I can help you to survive the turmoils in your life. And what kind of an anchor is Jesus? Look in Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. So in verse 19, Jesus, it says that what kind of an anchor Jesus is? Firm and secure. That means it, it, Jesus is not he might save you. He has a possibility that he can save you. He may save you. No. If we are anchored to him, we are guaranteed to be saved. Let's look in Matthew chapter 7 and see another uh, example about what it means to be anchored. How can we do that? In Matthew 7, 24 to 27, I'll read this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the stream rose and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. You know, Jesus is giving another example of anchoring. So, 
An example, when you're in, a, when you're in the sea, you're the boat that needs to be anchored. But when you're on land, the example is you're a house that needs a solid foundation. Here's an example of two people building their lives, their homes. Both heard the same message. And yet both respond very differently. And their response to Jesus is what determines what they, either they're wise or they're foolish. It's like, you know, we listen to sermons every Sunday, but we can respond differently when we go back, right? Some of us, we may respond and say, yeah, these are the things I need to change. Some of them respond, oh, this is not for me. So the wise man, the Bible says, Jesus says, heard and obeyed. Because he built his house on the rock, he's compared as a wise man. He's called a wise man. The first man heard the same message, but went and did whatever he wanted to do. Lived his life his way on his own terms and conditions. So he's compared to the one who built his house on the sand. Now, you know, building the house on the rock is not easy. Hard work, expensive, time consuming. But isn't that how it is even when obeying Jesus? It is not easy, right? It's expensive because some, most of the time it costs you something to sacrifice, to give up. And it's time consuming because many times you don't even see the results. You don't see the fruit the way you want it to be. Or, like the foolish man, you can take the easy way. Building a house on the sand. Easy, quick, cheap. It's like, you know, I'm sure you must have gone to the beach when you were small maybe. And remember you built a, a, a sand castle or you wrote names or something like that. How long did it last? The wave came and boom, it's gone. That is what happens when we try to take an easy way out to live our life. You know, building a house on the sand is like going by your feelings, emotions. But whatever you feel like doing, whether it's right or wrong, I feel like doing it, let me do it. If it makes everybody happy, let me do it. Because everybody is doing it, majority of people are doing it. That's easy to go with the flow. Whether it's right or wrong, who cares? If so many people are doing it, they all can't be wrong. The question is, when the rain comes, the stream rises and wind blows against what you have built, will it stand strong or will it fall with a great crash? That's the question. So whether your boat is in the ocean, whether your life is a boat in the ocean or whether it's a house on the land, you will face storms and hurricanes. You can't avoid that. And you're going to face storms, not one, two, many. I want to end with this passage, Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. Once again, to re-emphasize who should we be anchored to? What should be the foundation of our life? Now, yeah. this passage, you know, different people were talking about who Jesus was. Some said he was a rabbi, a prophet, a teacher. And so Jesus specifically asking Peter, Peter, what about you? Who do you say I am? And here we see Jesus, Peter acknowledging that you are the Messiah, the son of a living God. That basically what Peter is saying, you know, there is no one else to be saved except through you. You are the savior. Messiah means savior. Verse 18, Jesus says, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. Now, this sentence has been a source of many controversy. Claim that this statement of Jesus means that Peter is the head of the church and thus, Peter was the first pope. So when, when, when it says on this rock, you know what it refers to is not Peter. It refers to Peter's statement is verse 16. And what is that statement? You are the Messiah and the son of the living God. It is on that statement that Jesus is the Messiah is where the church is going to be built up. It is not on Peter. The statement of Peter. The first time the word church is comes over here. As mentioned in the Bible. The word church. But actually the real meaning of that word is actually an assembly. Ecclesia in Greek. Or called out. Or set apart. The foundation is not Peter. The foundation is Jesus. Because he's the Messiah. And he's the Lord. But also something that you see over here. Is there's an ownership by Jesus. He says I will build. My church. 
That means we are his. Because he paid the price with his own life. So you and I, we belong to him. Then he goes on to say that the gates of Hades or the Satan will not overcome it. Nothing can destroy God's church. So when you belong to Jesus, when you are anchored to Jesus, he will keep you safe. He will allow you to experience the storm, the turmoil, the hurricane. It's fun. It will also help you to survive the storm and go out of it. In conclusion, do you have a rock solid foundation in your life? Are you anchored to the right thing? Don't keep that anchor to yourself thinking that you can solve your problems. Don't throw that anchor in someone else's boat thinking that someone else can help you. Each one of us have our own storm that we face. Let's be anchored to Jesus. If not, we will not survive the storms and the hurricanes in our life. Thank you very much. God bless you.